<laughs> All right, so uh, this is a quick video on how to set up links. And you're like, what is links? Links is what lets you do the wicked fast searching that uses like a question mark or just whatever. So question mark, what is links? And I can just hit enter and I go down here and I say, what is links? And I get my zero click info from Wikipedia and I get an answer in like two seconds. Uh, you know, people would still be searching for this on the graphics, on the graphics browser if they were using it. And so, yeah, this is what links is. Now there's, there's many, many, many text-based browsers. Um, and I'm not going to talk about them. I'm just going to say that I believe links is still the best, um, for lots of reasons, but primarily because links allows you to, um, to really scan quickly. The other browsers try to do a fair amount of like maintenance of like a table and stuff like that. And links is just woo, super fast and uses the maximum amount of real estate. So it makes you the fastest and that's really why I like it. In fact, um, as I'm doing it right now, I'm doing it all with right hand. I'm browsing with my entire right hand using the VI bindings. I also believe I also use links instead of things like IntelliSense or built-in help because it's so much faster. It's just so much faster, but it does take a little bit to set up and get used to. So the first thing you need to do is do is install links. However you want to do that. So you have to install links. If you're, uh, if you're on Arch, you know, you do your Arch Pac-Man yay thing or whatever, but you need links and um, links lives uh, in user bin links. But the problem is, is that links was originally designed some time ago and it was designed to be for use um, on a system and not to be configured individually for all the users on the system it was meant to be sort of a sort of a tool that the, the system administrator would grant you um, different levels of access to using links but it was a way for you to, to browse on the system um, and for that reason it's a little bit harder to configure than than you than it might might make sense so uh, there's two configuration files that you need to, to do links. Um, and this here is my config on GitHub. Uh, it may or may not move to GitLab at some point. If it does, I'll put a redirect in here so you can go find that. But as you can see, um, I've got uh, all of my config files here, but there's two that stand out. Uh, links.cfg and links.lss. Okay, so these files are files that are taken from uh, the default when it installs. It puts it in some location. I don't remember. Someplace in Etsy, I believe. And so all I've done is I've taken out those files and I've made modifications to them. And I've left all of the comments and everything in, in here so that you can understand what they're doing. You might want to customize yours also. Here I have, for example, a start file on line 111 that sets to go to my website. So you can just go through this and find the things that you might want to change. Um, but there's a few key things that I really recommend you keep. Um, uh, I, you might be an Emacs person, but if you're not, if you're a VI person, then you want to go look for VI mode. Uh, if I can find it here. I don't know how I'm, I'm, this is, plus I'm not, not using links here. VI mode. Oh, wait, is it mode? Oh, there it is. VI keys always on. Emacs keys always on. So by turning these on, I can then navigate using VI um, okay, so so the the file we're looking at now is links.cfg. This file is configuring how links works and how you navigate it and all that stuff. But um, and you know you can grab mine and, and put it down on your own system. It's a pretty big file, um, and I don't I, frankly I don't remember every single thing that I've changed. Um, Oh, this is interesting. Positionable editor. I don't remember that. And I still have yet to configure all of my types. You can make links so that when it opens um, a picture or or something like that, you can actually view the picture with your local operating system. So you might want to play around with that. I don't generally do that. In fact, if, if I am dependent, let me go back. If I am dependent on uh, a visual graphics representation, for example, of a thing, 
So we'll do the search for links again. And let's say I wanted to go look at the Wikipedia page. Um, you know, I can right click and go to Wikipedia and almost always there will be a refresh. And, but even if there isn't, I can, I can type the letter I, and that will show me that I, here's my URLs. Okay. So I can click on those URLs using my, my mouse and they will open my, my web browser, my graphic web browser. And so I can see what I need to see. So I use links even to search for stuff that I know is ultimately going to be graphic because it's so much faster. And if you, if you haven't noticed, I'm searching on DuckDuckGo. And the reason is because of this. Uh, two question marks in my setup sets me up to run on Google. But Google fails to do anything significant. And it does find links. But look at how ugly it is. I mean, it's like disgusting. Google is a fail. On so many levels, Google is a fail. And so, um, you know, I, why would I even want to give away my information? They can't track me because there's no way to track with links. But if I were, I mean, but I'm, I'm so pleased with DuckDuckGo and I go to DuckDuckGo Lite, which is a version that lets you, you know, see, see things much easier. Um, you can even go into YouTube videos and pull those up um, and they will, they will open in your graphic browser. So there's lots of reasons to use links. Uh, but let's continue with how to configure it. So the, the other file that's involved, of course, so the first file is links.cfg. So that so you, well, I'll talk to you about how to get these files to be recognized. But the first um, use, the first file to configure is links.cfg. And if you really want to, you can go through every single thing and find all of your configurations in here. Um, this is not JSON. This came at a time, uh, hey, hi, uh, it came at a time well before that. Um, I was actually, the interesting thing about links is that it, it is being updated for a while there. People thought, oh, there wasn't going to be HTTPS support, you know, TLS or SSL. And there is. So you don't need to fear any of that stuff. It can deal with certificates just fine. In fact, my configuration automatically accepts um, certificates um, and turns off a lot of the annoying prompts so that I can search at the maximum level. Um, but if you if you so so that's this file the config the links.cfg file so i know i needed to talk about another file um we really can't go through the whole file but you're welcome to read it and you know post a question to me if you have a question so the other key file when you're dealing with links is the one that deals with colors and styles and this file is called links.lss so here you've got um all of the styles and the different color combinations and you can go play around with these as you wish um i do not like the colors that came with it um there's a bunch of like um colors that were just really really harsh um some colors were didn't work with solarized uh, back when i was using that a lot and so I've, I've i feel like i've got a color scheme that works well with me uh, this is just you know standard X term colors which I've started to use for streaming because of the contrast. Um, they are more visible in the light from phones and iPads and such when people are looking at my stream. But uh, but even if you have Molokai or you know Solarized or something, um, this color scheme should work for you. So that's really all you need to know about that file. Is this is where you would go to change that. So the next question is, how do I get these two files on my system and how do I get them to be recognized? So to, to answer that question, we have to go and start looking into um, other files. So um, after you install links, um, you'll be able to run it, no problem. But but um, I'm going to show you a, a file that I use that sets up the links aliases so that it's actually a command function that I have in bash. This won't work with Z shell. Um, Z shell. This is one of the main, the many reasons that Z shell sucks is that it doesn't do command functions at all. Um, so here we go. Um, this is my, my sort of modular links configuration. These files are all combined together to create one large bash RC for me, but I leave them individually kind of broken out so that I can test them and I can share them with y'all. So if you want to just test or, or take one, you can do that. So what I've done here is I have exported a links function that takes 
uh, that takes the the old links um, and finds the links wherever the path might be, and then it um, replaces it with a command function. A command function functions in every way as if it were a binary that was installed in a bin directory somewhere. And because this this loads at login in my Bash RC, it's available just like any command anytime without any startup cost because all the code has already been compiled and loaded into memory. That's the fundamental value proposition of command functions over any binary, including compiled C code. They will always be faster, and they are impossible with Z shell. So um, links here, we have this. We're doing links here. We do if dash z links. It says if I it says if I cannot find a links uh, variable. I mean, I mean, if I cannot find links at all, that means I didn't find links on the system. Then just tell them. Tell n is just a, a little function I have that prints out some nice colors. It actually does markdown, um, and it 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 colorizes the output and says doesn't look like links is installed. And then it just returns one because there's no links on the system. This line here, this is what's called a short circuit logical operator. Um, it says if I see that there is a a home directory containing dot links dot cfg, then go ahead and let's set a variable called links cfg to be the following dash cfg equals home links dot config, and we'll get back to these to these um, command line arguments later. But they're gonna, we're going to put together um, a, an actual argument pretty soon. Here we do dash r does the file that's readable is there a readable links dot lss in the same directory? If so, let's also set that. And then we, the final thing we do is we actually call it. So our, my underscore links uh, variable, uh, environment variable, contains the full path to the true links program. And so when we run it that way, this is the same thing as if I had run the full path to the binary. And that then it tacks on to the, to the command line the full path using the dash cfg argument to links, uh, which says use this configuration file instead of the one from the system. And unfortunately, links will not identify or look into your home directory without you doing that because of the reasons I earlier described. So now we have um, a dollar links lss. And we can put that in there, and that says, okay, let's go get that. So now our command line, and then finally we pass any commands, uh, any um, arguments that we may have passed. And I, I guess I can maybe do, drop the quotes there, but I think they're fine. So this allows us to pass um, a URL to the program. Um, so for example, if I wanted to call links without the search parameter, which I'll get to, I would call links, and then I would say I want to go to skillstack.io. Uh, and boom, there's my skill stack site. So uh, by default, um, the, any scheme that it is HTTP is assumed, um, but most sites will redirect you to HTTPS if, if needed. So this is, this is my site. This is, uh, again, this is another good example of why you should use things like unordered lists for your menu items. Let me just give you a, a quick view if you want to develop for you know links optimized, like I say. Um, you should probably consider uh, what your page looks like when it's not um, being rendered on a graphics web browser. And so making intelligent choices about how you semantically organize your page can really change um, how easy it is to view from links or from other you know text-based readers. So here are my here are my things and you can see if you inspect element on these, these are all unordered lists items. And so when I made my site, I was con you know, conscious to, to constantly test and see what it might look like to somebody using links. And I even have a little joke here at the bottom that says optimized for links and true terminal experts or masters. Um, there's really no reason not to allow links um, as a method. Um, and the entire documentation on my site is all links friendly and um, is, is very, very fast to browse. So, um, for this reason, um, you know, that's, that's the reason that I, that I did it that way. Um, I think if we put HTTPS, I think it still works. Let's try that. Yep. Okay. So, so that gives you your argument at the end. Um, so we've talked about links. We've talked about the links configuration file. We've talked about the links color file, and we've talked about, um, uh, one of the, the ways to write a command function to actually create a dynamic um, uh, 
command, you know, a full-blown command that defines where you should call it. You could almost get away with just doing an alias for that same thing if you know you have the file and it's going to be there every time. Unfortunately, if you do an alias, you won't be able to call links from other programs. So if you, if you for some reason, wanted to write a script and you wanted to have it ask a few questions and then fire up links, you could not do that because aliases are not, they don't persist into sub processes or sub shells command exported exported command functions do and that is why I, I use export dash f which once again is not possible on z shell so if you have a command function like this this is a way that even from vi i can jump right from vi into links if i needed to so we've talked about we've talked about what links is how to search the value of it uh, we've talked about um uh, how to how to set up your configuration file with, and it goes in the home directory by the way which i suggest you make a symbolic link from your config directory and if you don't know what a symbolic link is you know it can let me know otherwise you can just put the files there but if you don't do that you'll lose your files um okay so we have a symbolic link to those files and then we have this um, command function to call links the actual links and beyond that we need to that goes in your bash rc and beyond that we need um, some aliases to do some searching. So what the aliases that, that I have set up here, they're all contained in this file as well, but they, um, the aliases for question mark, here it is right here, the alias question mark runs duck. And duck is a, oh, I should probably export it. I didn't, I forgot to do that. I should probably fix that. But duck is a, is a command function that calls duckduckgo. So it calls links, and links therefore calls this command function up here, and it passes the DuckDuckGo URL, and this URL is manufactured here by calling URL encode, which is some pretty nifty code that, oh, this needs to be exported. I need to go back and fix this. So URL encode is a command function that takes this string and URL encodes it by going through each character and, tr and making it um, valid for use in a URL as what's called a query string. That's where the Q equals comes from. Um, and any, a query string is anything with after the question mark, and you've seen these a lot probably. So in the Google one, it does the same thing. It URL encodes it and passes it to Google's um, uh, search option. I do not know of a light variation of Google uh, as opposed to the, to the light one that we have here. Okay, so there we have it. We have got our our functions. We've got our ability to now to now query, and I went ahead and aliased question mark and two double question marks so that it passes my sentences on to um, to links and to there and to duck to do those things. Uh, it's not an obvious setup. It's a, my it takes a little bit of doing to get it to work, but this is how you do it. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do it further, or if you're, or if you get stuck, I'm always here. Um, you can go to rwx live or rwxrob.live if you ever have a question. rwxrob.live will take you to YouTube, which has um, uh, or wherever, and it also has links to my Twitch here, so you can come into Twitch and um, ask me directly anytime that I'm on. Uh, uh, it's been great talking to you. Uh, we do have a question. We have a couple of people that said good old links here. Um, so if you have any further questions on how to set that up, I'm happy to help you. Uh, I'm regularly talking about terminal issues and terminal mastery on on stream, and I continue continue to to publish uh, more about that. Um, and I'm going to call it call the video there. Thanks very much for watching.